How's your headache? It's nausea. <gasps> nausea. 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 Yeah. What the fuck is it? It's nausea. nausea. It's nausea and a, like a low humming headache. But she said that that's normal. Yeah. Um, the worst part was actually the needle. She said it was a normal size needle. I was like, that don't look no normal, but okay. <laughs> and um, they put it in a vein in your hand. Uh huh. And I turned away, and she was like, "Yeah, it's better if you turn away." And then like, she left my little cubicle and came back and was cleaning the floor. And then I saw it was like a blood soaked <gasps> bleach wipe. Huh? So I must have just dropped so much blood when she was just putting the needle in. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> tell the difference right now yeah but after five treatments she said you're gonna feel like a million bucks oh my god i mean can you just imagine not being tired all the time and not being believed yeah i'm so excited for you like this literally feels like um like the big reveal on the swan (laughs) did you ever watch that show (laughs) did i ever watch that show i'm sorry do you have do you want to do a swan story time or (laughs) Okay, uh, there was a contestant on the swan. I think she won. I'm not sure. <laughs> Picture this, Sicily, 1921. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it was the summer, summer 2003 on mm-hmm. like a campus, uh, on the campus in Southern California. Andy Cohen was not yet the Andy Cohen that he is. He was on his way. Yeah. But he had to make an original program for Bravo. This was before Housewives. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And Andy Cohen, as you know, is, you know, a pop culture encyclopedia. Yeah. He knows every reality person that has ever existed before he was even that. So, like, it was kind of like one of those things where him creating the Housewives franchise sort of was on his life path because you have to really care about pop culture in ways to like create a genre like that Mm -hmm. anyway um real world american idol any reality thing he he knew about so he cast me on a show called battle of the network reality stars for bravo it was canceled Mm -hmm. this is why you don't know anything about it (laughs) um (laughs) but it was supposed to be you know uh paying homage to in the 70s they had all of the biggest and brightest stars from nbc cbs abc yeah come and compete in like olympic level cute but fun heartfelt this was you know television for your family to sit around and watch right so wholesome boring shit um but this he cast and this had never been done before at this point he cast so this was like before surreal life before we started like voltroning and making um big brothery type actually no surreal life would actually be the best example the challenge actually would be the best example yeah um where you take known personalities in this reality world and put them all together to compete in whole wholesome fun mm-hmm. so you know water dunking take fucking swimming relay rat laps um uh, bobbing for apple dumb shit yeah wholesome i was on a team with charlotte from the amazing race mm-hmm. she's a little person not that that i'm listen that's just a, <laughs> this is the point you gotta <laughs> 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 it's just an important point because we're gonna get to the part <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but (laughs) I figure we can always edit that out in the end, I guess. (laughs) No, no, no. It's it's an important point. Um, Because as you know, I'm 4'11". Yeah. It matters. Um, (laughs) We had the swan. 
We had Nikki McKibben, may she rest in peace. Yeah. Remember her, the girl yeah. who was seeing her ass off and from she American was like, Idol. Hot topic from American Idol. Yes. Yeah. Um. How'd she? Die? It was. A, it was. It was. A st- I don't know. Huh. We'll have to Google that. But may she rest in peace because she was a really actually nice person. Yeah. Um. What was that girl's name? Ryan Starr, maybe. That sounds. Yeah. Black hair from from American Idol, but like super yep. Christian. Yep. Um, but like a body for days, body, 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 <laughs> but super Christian, like every day. It was just like, do you see my rib cage? Do you see my belly? Button? I'd be like my Jesus does. Um, <laughs> um, gorgeous girl. Who the fuck was the other one? Maybe I'm mixing and conflating my LA times, but there was a girl named Brittany from America's Next Top Model who wore a lot of bronzer. I just know she wore a lot of bronzer because one time we were all getting ready to go out and mm-hmm. the white wall in the bathroom had like a, you know, when Wiley Coyote runs through the wall and there's a black <laughs> silhouette. She sprayed herself and like there was a fucking person silhouette on the white wall of bronzer. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, her, I think she was there unless she wasn't there. And that was just in that time frame of my life. Anyway. <laughs> Because I do remember she was sleeping on, sleeping on someone's couch uh, of a person I knew who was also in reality. Whatever. The yeah. point is, I, there was a wild time <laughs> in the early 2000s. <laughs> Back to the swan. So the swan. <laughs> I was wondering how we got, I, how we <laughs> no, went to saying, that. <laughs> it's just such a hodgepodge of characters. So this is where I met Will Weichel from Big Brother. Will Weichel and I are still very good friends all of these years later. Like, uh-huh. shared a therapist in the city. Like, we roll deep. I cannot talk to Will Weichel for months at a time, and then I'll get a text of eyeballs yeah. and, like, uh, the wheat emoji sad in the wind, and I'll be like, girl, I know. Oh, and what nobody does that said mean? Anything. What? You sent that to me recently, and I just pretended like I knew what it meant. What does the wheat emoji mean? It's like tumbleweed crickets. Like, okay, girl. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so Will and I have that kind of relationship. Will and I were actually supposed to do a podcast in 2007 before podcasts were a thing. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I digress. Back to the fucking swan. <laughs> so- <laughs> I think Joe Millionaire was there. Oh, gosh. Um, it was a lot of reality omarosa was there but not not but not um she wasn't a contestant she 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 was a host fyi okay. like just just so all of you little reality run snow she was a host okay. <laughs> you guys are not hosts you are competing that's why you're in those outfits those ridiculous outfits i am a host that's how she like treated us yeah i have another story about her but we'll put that on the patreon okay <laughs> um because i'm still mad about it Okay. Um, still mad. <laughs> oh, still mad. It's been 20 years and I'm like, girl. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still root for Amorosa at all times because of that time that she checked Bethany on Bethany's own show. But she did She did try to check me one time and I didn't like that shit. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I really didn't like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Patreon. So. <laughs> who are we talking about? <laughs> The Swan, yes. So we're all on our team, Nikki McKibbins, me, Charlotte from The Amazing Race. I think her cousin, Mirla, Myrna. It was an Amazing Race duo. Okay. I think they were like Lebanese. I don't know. It was just a fucking hodgepodge us <laughs> team. <laughs> I, I had it, no business doing it. Were the teams, um, were they split up? by gender or like the, were there co-ed teams or how did that how did it they was, put you on teams it was co-ed teams and it was just andy's imagination so okay. andy was like you go with her you go with him and it was wild it made no fucking sense which made it amazing <laughs> the show shouldn't have been canceled because it was hysterical so um we're sitting in like a big 
auditorium, like gym, whatever, and we have each been given off, you know, separate spaces, you know, to do our little makeup and put our little uniforms on, whatever. And Mm -hmm. we're told ahead of time what the next, you know, little competition is going to be so we can do our little powwow and discuss, you know, how we want to strategize. And so in this kind of downtime, they film you, um, you know, just in case it's like it, it. it's not intentionally going to be on the show, but just in case, you know, some kind of like big strategic thing happens and they need that footage to give the backstory of it, whatever. It's not like intense filming to where, you know, you're on the camera. This is, this is, this was like really very, um, I wouldn't say scripted, but hokey. Okay. <clears throat> so the real shit that happens on these shows is when the cast is not obligated to film but they're getting the shit anyway that's mm-hmm. that's where the real shit happens so we're all sitting around whatever and we've already decided you know how it's going to be there was a little bit of an argument between um people on my team because there was going to be some swimming stuff going on and the yeah, i'm not the best swimmer <laughs> and i remember there was an argument that ensued between me and charlotte and charlotte's like i think i should go and she actually said that she had she was a, a a great swimmer, and I said, cool. But then somebody said, well, Melissa, and trying not to be rude, they said, Melissa, don't you think you should attempt it because your, this was what was said to me, your wingspan what? Huh? is greater. <gasps> Keep in mind, she's a little person. I am too, though, kind of. I was like, hold <laughs> on. <laughs> I was like, my arms might be longer, but I I'm not a good swimmer, guys. (laughs) But their dumbass argued for it. They put me in and, like, they did overhead at the time. This was, like, amazing technology. They had a jib, not a drone, a jib. So they had, like, paid a lot of money for this giant arm of a camera to be above head, uh, you know, over top. And so it was just a giant sea of blue, and you see the lines, and then you see all of the, you know, in, like, the Olympics, you see all of the competitors swimming. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, my lane is empty for, like, hell along. Like, I... <laughs> but that's what y'all want to do. We lost that one. Anyway, back to fucking this one. <laughs> I'm going to get there. Were your amazing race people, like, really mad at you? Because they have... You have to be pretty, like, uh, like physically fit to be in the amazing race, right? Not necessarily. You just have to be competitive and, like... I think the amazing race... I'm talking about the early days of Amazing Race. When oh, okay. it was regular people. Yeah. When it wasn't fucking, you know, people that go on American Gladiator competing. It wasn't, wasn't like, two fitness trainers go, you know, <laughs> gonna circle Rome. It was fucking Charla and her cousin Myrna, yeah. bitch. Like, <laughs> this is way back. We're talking about 20 years ago. Yeah, okay, you know, before okay. Before everything became Fear Factor Joe Rogan crazy. Yeah. So, um... We're sitting in this little room, whatever, we're strategizing for the day, and Amrosa is, you know, making sure we all know that she's a host and we're not. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of downtime. So, you know, we're eating little Doritos and shit. We're sitting around. And the girl from the Swan is on my team. And because we're sitting around, I see her ankle. And it was two intertwined sticks. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't tell what it was. So, you know. I was like, what's the significance of your tattoo? Oh, no, you never asked that question. <laughs> you don't? No. <laughs> well, you don't. I learned the hard way that you don't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this, is what, this was so bad, and I'm sure this woman fucking, if she doesn't remember, we all, then all the better, because it was literally so bad, and my friend pulled me aside. I was like, Melissa, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. So it was two intertwined sticks. And I didn't know if it was like, you know, the the snake around the doctor shield. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck it was. I was just like, (laughs) you have an ankle ankle tattoo. And it was smallish, you know? Yeah. She said it was um, two hockey sticks. And in my mind, I was like, well, why would two hockey sticks be braided like that? Okay. Mm -hmm. No, (laughs) that's a valid question. (laughs) But you don't ask it out loud, apparently. Nope. So then I was like, but also one stick's longer than the other. She's like, excuse me? I was like, 
Oh, shit. One has like seven braids and the other one has like six braids. I was like, so they're like uneven. And so my friend just like, she's like, let Melissa over here, please. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> she's like, dude, you can't tell her she has uneven hockey sticks on her fucking tattoo. Right. We're, we're a team. I was like, oh, shit. Like, she's upset with me. He's like, she was like, you think? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, anyway. you've questioned maybe something that is highly personal and she doesn't want to talk about, <laughs> or she just does not have a good reason. And second of all, you've now told her that a very permanent thing on her body <laughs> is not perfect. <laughs> then don't get tattooed. Listen, <laughs> there's a think about the 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 volume of stupid people. I'm a stupid people. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that wasn't even the point of the story. The point of the story is we had this one. <laughs> How many minutes has it been? I we was going to say it's been 15 and a half minutes and we're not even. <laughs> the swan. <laughs> the point of the story is the swan. was wa- Wanted to be very careful in these competitions because... Oh. Her surgeries were still setting. <gasps> <laughs> oh, that was, was a bad move. Listen, she was extremely famous at this particular time because the show was huge. Yeah. You remember? Oh and my the God. show had never been done before. It was like, we're going to do 98 surgeries right here in the living room. And yes. it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was crazy. I remember I was in college and I w- we would like watch it every week. It was so good. Yes. So, like, this was a huge get, like, and obviously, you know, we, I had a lot of questions. It was just like, so, like, there's drains that your yeah. nose, your, your, your teeth, like, how much pain are we talking about? Like, your, your, your stomach, like, what are we saying here? Um, this was before Heidi Montag. This was, oh, this was like, you know this was like wild shit. Like, this was like, it's plastic surgery was still very much like taboo and for the rich only. Yeah, and there was no botched. There was no, like, it Mm -mm. wasn't normalized yet. So, like, this was just wall-to-wall outrageous. Who would do this? Yeah. 17 surgeries in one day in a a watershed. You know, like, (laughs) it was just, it was crazy. And then the fact that it became a pageant, too. So it Uh was like, all of you are ugly. (laughs) We're going to make you prettier, and then you're going to compete each other to see who's the least ugly. It was just like... Cool society. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely does not hold up today. (laughs) Yeah. So I just had a lot of, anyway, she didn't want to do the fucking touch football because of that. And I was like, well, I can't do it. Yeah, I I also, you know, had teeth issues. And it was just like, are we more concerned with her whole face or Melissa's teeth? Like really? (laughs) Anyway, the show was canceled, thankfully. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's it? That's the story? Yeah, that was the story. You said, I don't know what. <laughs> That's a fucking story. Oh, my God. I thought, oh, I fuck, don't even Melissa. know how we got here. Would you ask me about the swan? Yes. I said that, oh, for Christ's sake. I said that I was imagining that after your iron infusions, that this was going to be like the swan and you were going to be a whole different person. And then you took 18 minutes to tell me a story that didn't really happen. <laughs> oh, wait. You weren't even talking about the swan, the reality show? Yes. Or you were just talking about, in general, like a swan rising up and feeling great? No, I was talking about the reality show. Like, you were just going to, like, you know, shed all of the... I don't know. Like, in my mind, I see this, like, total metamorphosis from, like, tired, you know, Melissa who doesn't feel well to, like, this whole, like, vibrant, glowing new person. I'm so excited for you. Okay, see, the the, the problem with us getting to know each other and now understanding each other's language, but also still completely not understanding each other's language is we didn't even explain the thing that I had to get us to this (laughs) point. So let's backtrack there. I got an iron infusion. (laughs) Which is why I feel nauseated and have a headache today and last night because it's one of the side effects. Minimal side effect, but (laughs) <laughs> so for what years they just put like iron into you or is it like a cocktail of things or like what is this what it's, does it um, mean it's a drug called venifer it looks like flat coca-cola in a little iv bag mm-hmm. um 
and I have tried, I've been put on every iron supplement, every, I was drinking a, a, a bottle of this shit called Floridix. Mm-hmm. Everything um, in ingestible form of iron mm-hmm. uh, smells and tastes like blood to me. I can't Ugh. even explain. It's just like a rusty, weird Metallic, gross. yeah. Yeah, and also my body doesn't absorb it for some reason. So I could take a whole bottle of iron pills and still feel like shit but i mm-hmm. also came across my anemia started getting really bad after while i was pregnant with shira so with shira my anemia was really low i was at a um it was really hot and i was at a camp event for for um shalom and i just blacked out like i mean imagine like an eight-month pregnant woman blacking out at your camp in oh, front God. of like in front of like a bunch of fucking six year olds. It was yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about blacked out ambulance. I didn't even know. <gasps> like I woke up in the hospital, like, oh shit. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. And then it was got everybody upset and oh God, the baby. Yeah. So they did my 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 blood work, whatever, and they found that my levels were really low. And they're like, We don't understand how you've been functioning. <gasps> every day and in my mind i was just like i am a stay-at-home mom while pregnant this this don't we all feel like shit like this i had no idea that you didn't have to feel like shit like that i had no idea i thought that's how you felt you know like i was just always tired always thirsty we thought it was diabetes we thought it was this we thought it was that and finally they did the blood work and they were like you're extremely anemic and we actually actually have to do a double blood transfusion (gasps) right now we're admitting you. I was like, oh. So Justin's like, what the fuck? Oh, my I was gosh. Like, I have payroll, though. Can you bring me the laptop? <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> you know, mom's work is never done. Of course. So I had the double transfusion, and they said, this anemia will resolve after you have the baby. So mm-hmm. I had Shira how many years ago? Mm-hmm. A million. Yes. So I've always never felt great. I've always just been tired, but I also am getting older. Mm-hmm. I also am, you know, stank. I just thought this was my general disposition. <laughs> you know, I was like, this is who I am, man. Fuck you. I'm tired. Get on. I don't want to do anything. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought it was depression. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's so hard. Like when you're pregnant and then like after you have kids, your baseline for like feeling good really just kind of like hits a new low. And you just assume that like, okay, this is just my new normal. It's yeah. so easy to write off health problems. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And I also like, you know, your body changes, your hormones change, everything yes. changes. So in your mind, you just go, yeah, this is how that's supposed to feel. Yeah. And then also, you know, I did my due diligence. I went to the doctor. I went, I did this and that. And they were just like, okay, yeah, sure. Have a great mm-hmm. day. So nobody said it was really bad. All the while, it's deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating until right before the pandemic, I was like on my fitness shit. Mm-hmm. I was eating fucking yogurts and granolas and fucking. I remember you I were drinking f- juice. Fit. Girl, and I was cute. My little butt was high and tight <laughs> and I could like I could like move it left right left right left right like they do in videos. Like I would just be in the mirror <laughs> looking at my raw butt muscles. Like I was cute. <laughs> Until I wasn't. I was in like a class and like I had worked my way up. You know that weighted bar? Of course you do, fitness lady. Yeah. The 15 pound weighted bar. Like I started off with like, you know, a little bullshit four pound bar. Mm hmm. And I had worked my way up to a 15 pound bar. But, you know, 15 pounds went down, middle, up, down, middle, up, down, That's hard. middle, up a bunch of motherfucking times. And I felt like a tightness in my chest. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I, I, I excused myself from the class and like sat outside just real quick and then blacked out. And oh, another shit. ambulance came. <gasps> this was like. 2019 and even then they were like yeah we're gonna need to start dealing with your anemia so they're like you need to um but then they did me a battery of like heart stuff because i had said my chest hurt i went to every i went to cardiologist i went to neurologist i did mris i did this that they couldn't find anything wrong with me meanwhile it's the fucking anemia guys yeah um so finally uh, I tried to get, for some reason, 
they don't want to cover iron infusions because they just want you to take the two dollar shitty pill that my body can't absorb so i have spent all of this time Mm -hmm. proving that i am sick enough to need this treatment so welcome to the healthcare system in america it's so ridiculous Mm mm-hmm and I don't know. I was like, is it because I'm brown? Like, what's it? Can- <laughs> <laughs> no, there, I mean, there are real biases towards brown people when it comes to medicine. Absolutely. I, it wouldn't be a stretch, but hopefully that wasn't the case. How do you, um, how do you become anemic? I don't know. I think it's because I'm brown. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> my mom has it. Uh, I think Marlene has it. My body just doesn't create the iron that I need and also doesn't help that this is a no red meat household you know like Mm -hmm. I don't have red meat in my house because Justin doesn't eat it my kids don't eat it but we need to start eating it that's just the bottom line that's just the black ass bottom line is we need to start eating red meat up in here (laughs) and you know I want to start doing short ribs I want to start doing shit up in here that makes him upset (laughs) I wouldn't have these problems if we didn't have to follow your weird ass fucking love the animals shit so um (laughs) So once you have your infusions, then does that mean like you're good to go for life or is this something that you're going to have to maintain? I think you have to maintain it. Okay. Um, but the infusion center is awesome. Tell me about, do I you mean, get a heated depressing. blanket? Yes. <gasps> yes. I mean, it's depressing. It's, my, it's old motherfuckers in there hooked up to shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mackie, could you bring that? <laughs> it's that. But I'm in my own little curtained cubicle. You uh-huh. sit down. You order your little breakfast or lunch, depending <gasps> on. You tell them what room you're in. Someone comes. They bring you your little food. I had soup, and I had a little turkey panini. Um, I love a hospital meal. That was, like, the you highlight. Do? Oh, my God. Yes. What? They're so I, brutal. <laughs> there's, so, there's like something oddly comforting about like, oh my God, I loved because, you know, when I had the kids, I was in the hospital for like a lot of days because of my cesareans. And so there were like a lot of hospital meals that I got to order. A Christ Hospital here in Cincinnati. If you guys have to be admitted to the Christ Hospital, order the taco salad. The taco salad is <laughs> so good. So fucking good. Does it have real Fritos in it? You know how you people love, you Ohioans no. love a, a, a real Frito. Oh, but, oh, hold on. Hold on. to Put a pin in that. I got to come back to that because I thought of you this weekend when I was at Costco. Walking but... taco? Yes. You can buy a kid at Costco. <gasps> yes. You know how yes. long I've been wanting to try the walking taco? Okay. I will go back and buy it for you. Chris was already salty about the bill for Costco, and I could tell that like when we got to the checkout, it was not going to be a fun time. So I didn't even dare put that Hold walking taco Can box. We, you know what? We should actually discuss Costco. Okay. This is not sponsored. Um, <laughs> but, but if they do want to, we would happily accept it. Listen, I have a lot of feelings about Costco. Um. I actually went on a, on a on a Twitter thread about what luxury means. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and someone had tweeted that luxury isn't necessarily buying the most expensive thing. Luxury is getting what you want when you want it. Absolutely. And being able to afford that and not having to be set back. And I was like, yes, just literally having a Costco membership is luxurious as shit. Yeah. Um, and it's not a privilege that I take lightly. I... Love it, especially because they always have Hello Kitty stuff in there. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Justin Beck is also, like Chris, in a physical pain when the bill comes. (laughs) Oh. What? Yeah. Yeah. This what y'all this, get? What, what was what was your number? Um, family we, of five. Yeah, Midwest. so family of five. Well, we went ham, and yeah, don't you have to? Well, it's we Costco. took the kids. The, our I don't know if your kids eat like my kids do, but my kids eat like they're they haven't been fed for thirty days and thirty nights. They spent the night with my in laws on Saturday. And then proceeded to tell them that they hadn't eaten all day Saturday when we know that that was a lie. 
They did nothing but eat in the hours leading up to going to my mother-in-law's, but they know when they go to my mother-in-law's, it is an all-you-can-eat buffet, line your pockets with plastic bags, we're coming home with goodies, we're going to eat the entire time, so we well, take them to Costco. I don't know why you're sitting up here lying and acting like you fed them kids. You didn't. They went in there hungry. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ate. They had tacos. They had cupcakes. They had <laughs> breakfast. I watched Quinn eat a pot pie, a tiny pot pie. So they ate. Now, we took the kids to Costco because we were like, okay, if you guys are going to complain and say that we didn't have food, you're going to need to like pick out things that you want here at Costco today. So we went through, we filled the did, cart. They got everything they Christmas wanted. Did Christmas come early? Because... <laughs> Taking your kids in Costco and being like, pick your snack is wild bananas, fucking number one mom shit. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was this was Chris. Chris was like, I'm sick because he's the one that does the food shopping. So he was like, I'm sick of everybody complaining. Please just pick what you want. And he was like, and we're going to load it up because we're not coming back like for a couple weeks. So everybody's getting their shit. And he's like, OK, are you good? Is this what you want? Da, 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 da. So we go and we pay and the kids are witnessing the checkout. And when the woman reads the total and she says that we have spent three hundred and fifty seven dollars, Quinn almost loses her bad. mind. That's not bad. That's great. You guys did great. And she was like, <laughs> are, huh, are we going to are we going to be able to afford our grocery? Because we still had to go to Aldi. And she was like, oh, my God, are we going to be able to pay our bills this month? That's a lot of money. And I was like. That is a lot of money. So when daddy and I lose our minds that you guys have Mm -hmm. eaten the entire giant family size box of goldfish in 24 Mm -hmm. hours, this is why. You guys don't understand how much it costs to feed a family. And so then Chris was like, he was like, our weekly grocery bill, just like in all, is like 400 bucks a week. And he was like, and that's when I'm being strategic. And he's like, so think about this. We spent $357 and we only went to Costco. He was like, I didn't even go to Aldi yet. You got $43. You going about, you about to get a carton of pineapple. (laughs) (laughs) You got the shitty bread, you know, no, no organic fruits for you. But I, I was like, oh, dude, the, just the fruits alone. That's uh, the bulk of my, listen, I have a Costco system. So, you know, you only go on the outside layers of the store. Yeah. Never go in the middle. The middle yeah. is where you're just fucking around and you're just rich. Well, like, that's where the walking taco was in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to get back because there's not because it's regional. I'm not going to have walking taco. I will Venmo you. Tell Chris, I need it. <laughs> I've been thinking about that stupid ass walking taco since the first season. Okay. <laughs> I need the kit. Is it tiny bags of Fritos? Am I going to need ground beef package? Like, what are we talking about? I couldn't understand. I was trying to look at the box, but he was like moving along down the aisle, like at a clip where I wasn't going to be able to read the box and understand because I was literally like, I'm sending this to her for her birthday. Uh, okay. But hold, I- on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We've already just encountered another problem. <laughs> Sir. Costco is the destination. Why are you Costco walking like this? Is, is for wandering. Well, we were at the end of our trip. <laughs> and so he was making his way down the aisle because he needed almonds. And so he was like, you know, getting those like last few little bits here because we've already made, we've already hit the perimeter. So we've already, already gotten all of our cold stuff. And, you know, he's now. Now is Chris particular about the cart? Because Justin Beck is very picky about the cart. Like I just How throw so? shit in. Oh, hmm. I just throw shit in. Justin's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Boxes, babe, cold, <laughs> this, like, what's going on here? And I'm like, listen, my job is to point. Your job is to gather. Okay. And then after that, you go wait in that line. And then I go wait in the car after I've removed a Pocky from the package. Correct. <laughs> and now I'm sitting in the car waiting for you. And I've got the kids. We're eating yeah. our um, uh, churros hot Uh while you do the work daddy what the fuck because remember pre-pandemic i did costco by myself for years yeah and like i don't think i don't think people understand this is why i tip crazy when i had to instacart costco because Mm -hmm. it's a skill set to get it right it's a skill set to package it and bring it to the house it's a skill set to um save money it's hard it's hard. there's a lot of thinking involved but yeah. i also like don't think at all i'll be like coconut fucking clusters <laughs> boom never seen this 900 of them getting them 
Yeah. <laughs> Get one, eat one. Ooh, these are gross. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, you definitely buy stuff. I we were over like you know where they have all like the pre made meals and stuff like in the very back of the Costco, and yeah. um, Chris and the kids were like in you know they have like those little coolers like in the middle there and they were looking at something over there and these soups caught my eye because I had seen them at Whole Foods the day before and so I was like oh let me see what these are because they were in really cute little skinny bottles and I like went over to pick them up and this guy behind me. Is like, I guess, watching me like pick them up, look at them, and then I put them back on the shelf when I realized how much they cost. And he was like, It's okay, mama. He's like, You should get something for yourself. He's like, It doesn't have to be all about those kids. And I was like, You are correct, but I'm also not paying $11 for three skinny little single size, single serving size soups. And he's like, Ah, oh, yeah, no, no. He's like, You get those at Kmart or at, uh, at Kroger. And I was like, yeah, Exactly. I was like, That's okay, really here's expensive. The thing, I mean, I would have paid eleven dollars for three of them, motherfuckers. That's so much money. Yeah, but three goes into eleven. It's three. How much? How many times is three going to eleven? Whatever. That's Math like... is not the forte. The point is, <laughs> <laughs> that was cheaper than taking all the kids to Chick Fil A. Yeah, but we haven't done that much lately, and those soups were just going to be for me. They're not for the kids. Oh, yeah. There's also, oh, for sure. There's a lot of Costco <laughs> items that are just for me. Right. <laughs> like I bought a whole, they had samples of liquid IV and I wanted to try them because I had ordered them for my dad and I was like, oh, I wanted to sample this. So I had a little sample and it was really yummy and it was Drip very drop? expensive. Was it yellow? Um, I, there were three different flavors. I got the strawberry, but there was a yellow one, there was a green one, and then there was strawberry. Yeah, but it was those too. very expensive for this little pack of drinks. Listen, uh, it's not expensive when you think about the bulk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you got to have the mindset. You got to have the mindset. And the sample lady did hand me like eight of the sample packs when I grabbed the little packet from her table. She was like, here, take these two. And then the kids were very worried. They're like, how are they going to know that that we don't have to pay for those? I was like, God, you guys need to go to the store more often. <laughs> yeah. Also, that's what a sample is. Absolutely. You're supposed to get extras. Yeah. They put the samples back. I mean, we don't need any. We don't need the samples anymore since the pandemic. But we also don't ever bring the kids in there anymore. Yeah. We used to. It was an affair. You know, it was a fun thing. But like. Yeah. Now that you have the Instacarters in there doing their thing too, it's like a fucking you're in there fighting for your life. Yeah, it was. It was. It's uh, not leisurely and busy. fun like it. It is on. Remember, it used to be like Thursday morning was my Costco day, so I would yeah. go do my little. I would go do my little Zumba. Go home, take a shower, put on eyeliner. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would be in Costco two and a half hours before I had to pick the kids up again. I could just yeah. be in there. Ooh, yeah. what's this? You know, feeling blankets, rugs, pillows. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole glasses. experience. I used to be up in there. <laughs> but now, you know, you just got to get your bananas and go. Yep. Um, but I love Costco. And I also, like, have weird Costco loyalty. Like, some people are like, oh, I'm a more of a BJ's person. Ew. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when we lived in Florida, we had a BJ's nearby, and um, a friend that we had made, he was like, oh, you guys got to go to BJ's. And I was like, BJ's? Like, I don't even want to go to Sam's. It's got to be Costco. No, there's something to be said about that. First of all, the name BJ's, I'm not doing that. No. Um, mm -mm. <laughs> also, I have a th I know that Costco's logo is red, but it doesn't feel like a red store. I know that Target is red, but it doesn't feel like a red store. Yeah. I don't like red stores. Trader Walmart Joe's is a red, is red store. But it doesn't... Walmart is a red store. Even though it's blue, it's a red store. Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you mean. And I, if it feels red, I don't I don't like it. I don't. Menards is a red store. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever that is, for sure. You know, <laughs> it's, and, like a, um, it's like a, um, it's like a Costco mixed with like a Lowe's and Home Depot. It's like you can get hardware stuff for your house, but then you could also buy like food. It's weird. Oh, we have one of those, but it's small. But it's big, but it's small, and yeah. it's called Rain Dew. But it's like in a in a little um, 
Rain Dews. I actually just discovered Rain Dew because my friend Jamie, who grew up um, closer to Queens, knew about Rain Dew. And one day I said I'd never been in Rain Dew. And she's like, I'm sorry, what? So then <laughs> I figured out Rain Dew. Rain Dew, you can get balloons blown up. You can get uh, a table saw. Yeah, you can that's get Menards. Doritos. You can get uh, jogging pants. You can get the latest beanie booze. Oh, um, it's kind of like um, wow, a whole section of like Melissa and Doug's. Oh, a craft section, makeup for days. Every hard to find beauty product. Yeah. Like over the counter beauty product. Like if you go in CVS, they're not gonna have it. But if you go all the way to the beauty supply store, they'll have it. Fucking Rain Dew will have that shit. Rain Dew oh. is also an experience. Wow. Yeah. There's like you can buy ice, bitch. You could buy a fucking Christmas tree at Rain Dew. Wow. Yeah, you can buy a Christmas tree at Menards, but they don't have like cosmetics. I don't think. Oh, I love the cosmetics section. There's oh, like that's a- cute. Oh, yeah. Um, Crafts. Like, I needed... um, Claire's son likes Norwals, and um, he... We wanted to, like, surprise him. He he, he had a little fender bender on his face, and he had a little trouble there, so we wanted to, like, cheer the little boy up. Mm -hmm. And and he liked Norwals. I went all over looking for Norwals. Why did Raindu have all the Norwals? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I do love those kind of stores. Yeah. And I think where I started liking that store is in Florida. Marlene's first job was this place called Joel and Jerry's. And Joel Mm -hmm. and Jerry's was a mini version of that. And I remember visiting my sister at work and getting Twizzlers and crayons and whatever. And and I actually remember getting them all free. So maybe that's why. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, why that's like a warm fuzzy core memory for you yeah. it was theft but it was also like i love my sister um <laughs> listen i wasn't doing it <laughs> maybe she was paying after you left <laughs> yeah let's just say that she was definitely fired from there though so <laughs> oh. I do love that retail experience where it's it's a lot of stuff in one. I do. Yeah. But it has to be the right environment. Yes, it can't be red. Mhm. Mhm. And I feel like Costco is starting to teeter in red cuz I feel like there's some red vibes in there lately. Oh, really? Mhm. Mhm. Hmm. Like, I usually I haven't been like this weekend was the first time I've been in a long time. Chris kind of like he'll go now because it's closer for him like after work. So if we need something, he'll run in there quickly. Um, but you know what it is? A place starts feeling red vibe if people don't have masks on. I OK. I was just going to say the <laughs> same thing because this weekend, like when the kids were gone, we went out and we had some errands to run. And I was like, I want to go through Home Goods because I need a little side table for my chair down here in the office. And so we did Home Goods, and then they didn't have anything. So we breezed through TJ Maxx. They didn't have anything. And then we went into Nordstrom Rack because Chris was like, I want to see if I can find some jeans to replace these ones that got a hole in them. Nordstrom Rack was feeling very red because it was a very mask free environment. And then I started to get like uh, almost paranoid being in the store Mm -hmm. because people were like getting real close to me and like making like double passes like behind me and so finally I had to go stand at the front of the store and then just like the very maskless nature of the entire thing I texted him I was like I gotta go wait outside I can't be in here anymore and he was like why and I was like because the last man that just walked by me I was convinced he had a gun in his pocket but it was just his hand but I thought it was a gun (laughs) and I was like "I, I had to I had to go I can't be in here anymore dude I know this is going to sound crazy, but I do gun assessment, too. Can you imagine picking up the phone 
Nine one one. I need help. Who the fuck is paying for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What? 911? I just I just see that there's going to be a big bill for an ambulance. I'm not trying to call 911. Dude. You know how hard it is to get an ambulance bill rectified? Yes, I do, but all I do is stay in an ambulance and I'd be like, "Fuck." I wake up in them and be like, "Fuck." <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and, be, and then start digging in my bag. Did you get my insurance card, ma'am? We're the ambulance. I know, but there's going to be a problem I already can see. Gonna, yeah, you guys aren't the approved ambulance. I bet. Fuck. It's I a whole racket. Take, let me out right here. I can walk, <laughs> ma'am. You don't have a leg. I don't care. <laughs> just put it, put it in my handbag. Um, just put it the bloody side up so it doesn't stain anything, and just point me in the direction of the this? hospital. How about this? You drop me off here, but you trail me there. I don't want to be in the vehicle. You just trail me. <laughs> Actually, call me an Uber, and then just follow behind the Uber like a police escort. Yes, I'm serious. There's got to be. Like cool healthcare in our comp- in our in our country, where <laughs> you wake up in an ambulance and immediately are worried about the bill and not your health. Oh, it's ridiculous! I when when Lennox fell off the diving board this summer, I definitely because I know how much it costs to show up to the children's urgent care, and I thought, okay, well at least I'm not going to the ER. I'm going to the urgent care, so this is going to be less expensive. And like debating, like. Do I think it really needs stitches? And then calling the pediatrician and they're like, well, you could come here and we could look. But then I was like, oh, I'm going to have a copay at the pediatrician. So it probably will save me like 40, 50 bucks if I just <laughs> head straight Dude, to the urgent care. <laughs> doing meth math when your child's bone is sticking out of their face. <laughs> Listen, I. <laughs> it's terrible. When Shalom member started yeah. the pandemic when i didn't let her do shit and then she said she yep. was gonna go play outside with her friend and then she got on that scooter which who told you uncoordinated <laughs> ass to get on a scooter i was so upset and justin was like babe whatever this is she's a child and I was yeah. like, first of all I, we're not gonna do this leave it to beaver ass shit first of all you're mean as hell your tone is crazy and now all of a sudden you're the nice caring parent because i was fucking riled up i was like first of all it's a motherfucking pandemic you're gonna have me going in the very you gotta get an x-ray i gotta be around a motherfucking bunch of doctors this place yep. is where the covid comes i told yeah. you and i was <laughs> furious he was like babe her wrist is broken i said and it wouldn't be if her monkey ass didn't get on a goddamn scooter so <laughs> <laughs> he was like, babe, ki- it, things happen. Kids are kids. I was like, listen, just because you popped off a firework and broke off Tommy's eye and your parents had to pay a million dollars out of the insurance and that was all okay, whites, we don't do that here. We don't do any dangerous activities here. I told your ass, stay on the sidewalk where oh, it's safe. No. Matter of fact, shouldn't have been on the sidewalk. Who told your ass to be on the sidewalk? Just go ride that scooter in the grass. Shalom. <laughs> I said no scooter. If you were in here playing video games, we wouldn't have you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. People that do adventures and shit, they'd be like, I'm going skiing. What? Matt. Oh, gosh. Stranger friend Matt. Yeah. Went skiing. Girl. Okay. That's rich people. I, I, I went skiing a lot when I was younger, and my f- freshman year of high school my dad had these guys that he they were like customers of his and they were going out to Colorado to go skiing and my dad took me and so this was the first time like we have this little place here called perfect north and we had skied in like Pittsburgh before but like I had never been to like actual mountain mountains and so on one of the last days that we were there, my dad and I had split up and it was like the last run of the day. And I was, of course, like 13 and thought I was hot shit. And I went off. There were like these little trails off the side of the main run. And they were fun because they were like windy and they sometimes they had like little bumps so you could get a little bit of air. And I went on this little side trail and I hit a spot and I flew off and I hit a tree with the Mm. side of my head and it knocked me out. Yes. Fucking around. This was before Sonny and Cher. It knocked me out. And the next thing I remember was ski patrol was hovered over me asking me if I was okay. And of course I was like young and stupid and I was embarrassed and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just got to find my dad. They let me get back on my skis, go to the bottom of the mountain. I, I, My dad and I had walkie talkies because this was like pre like nobody had a cell phone unless you were like incredibly wealthy. And so I like walkie talkie my dad. I don't know where I am. 
I've got to get on this bus to get back to the condo where we're staying. It was terrible. Hold on a Nobody second. Nobody took me to the doctor. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things you just revealed. <laughs> What you mean you're getting on a bus by yourself? I was just like so upset and my head hurt so bad and it hurt to open my you jaw. You had a concussion. I, I'm sure I did have a concussion. You could have had a brain was, bleed. I mean, I fucking blacked. I hit so hard I blacked out. Nobody nobody bothered to take me to the doctor. Nobody bothered to check on me. I think my well, mom just was like, don't let lot. her go to sleep. This is explaining a lot because last night on the Monday Night Live, this injury has recurred because <laughs> I was so confused. I worry about it. Like sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I hope that there's like not lasting brain damage that like comes back to like kill me in my sleep while I'm still very young. You never know. And that's on anxiety. Listen, I... <laughs> believe in my heart that my body is making tiny blood clots and any day I'm gonna fucking grab my chest to go it's my time I yeah. it's not funny I'm fucking oh no. walking I'm only laughing right so I don't cry <laughs> I'm very concerned about my long COVID like the other day my scalp hurt and Justin was like babe just please because he wants to start resuming life. He's like, we got to use our super immunity. We got to have, you know, we got to go to dinners. We got to have people over. Yeah. Here. And I'm like, girl, first of all, you're about to have a bunch of people over here um, getting ready for this tour. You know, it's going to be a, a ragtag group of uh, COVID ass strangers in my basement all day. Yeah. Um, doing pre-production. And you want to expose it. Like for me, every hangout is an exposure. Like that's how yeah. I think of it. And he's like. But we don't hang out with any of our friends. We don't do anything. And I'm like, I know, but you're doing stuff. Yeah. That's the stuff that we're doing. Right. But don't you? And he's like, but you just had COVID. And I was like, I don't know where this idea came from that you can only get COVID <laughs> once. And I was like, but I also think it's a cumulative thing. You just keep getting COVID until you die. That's what I, that's how. <laughs> <laughs> and I already had a bad bout. And, you know, like his thing is... I hear over here him talking about it because I'd be eavesdropping on all his business calls. No, yeah. you know, um, you know, we had it. It came through my house around Christmas time. My oldest daughter, she's in school and she got it. And for me, it just felt like, you know, allergies for a couple days. You know, my wife claims claims. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, he she didn't. Had, she, she had a rougher go with it, but she also has, you know, she's dealing with an anemia issue right now. So I think she's like, you know, conflating the two. Conflating. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, I'm literally dying. I just told you right now that my scalp hurts. My scalp hurts. Oh. I've never had my scalp hurt. And I was like, you know, like when you have a too tight ponytail? Yeah. Oh, God, that's the worst. And then you take it out. My scalp feels like, like that tender. every day. Yeah. My scalp <sighs> feels like that every day. Like I just sat for box braids for 18 hours all day long. Oh, shit. And that's long COVID. The tops of well, my feet I... have a rash. That's long COVID. I read yesterday that there are things like that make you more susceptible. They're finding that if you have asthma, if you have an unhealthy gut and um, autoimmune issues make you more prone to having long COVID. Listen, I think that the anemia, which is a blood issue, and I think COVID is more than a respiratory issue. I think COVID is a fucking vascular issue as well. Yeah, I think that the anemia and my body already behind, already not tip top, made my recovery from COVID harder than everybody else's. Also, I was the mom. I was the one running and getting and giving and going and did. I still supervising right. showers. I never rested really. Yeah. So everybody got better quick and I didn't. <clears throat> I feel like I'm really, you know, outside of it now. But like, why does my scalp hurt? Why are the top of my feet itchy? Not the top well, of my hopefully, feet. Well, um, <laughs> hopefully, the top hopefully of my feet is mad itchy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, and I told Justin, I was like, you were gaslighting me. If I tell you my scalp hurts and it's long COVID, that's what it is. Yeah. It's not long COVID, but it, it hurts. <laughs> Dude, it's long COVID. I'm telling you. You're going to manifest it. Don't manifest it. You're just get, like, your brain is so powerful. Like, truly, truly, like, you have to, like, think, like, healthy, positive thoughts as much as you can. 
think happy thoughts. Okay. Remember that episode <laughs> of Go Gabba Gabba? Wow. See? Yes. COVID fog. My brain also jumps place to place to place to place. It's not normal. And this is, this is another thing. Back to the ADHD. Um, I can't focus for shit. Well, this is my theory. I think that like November threw you out of whack. And then we hit the holidays and then you got COVID. I think you've now had like, and then now you're dealing with like the fallout from like being sick and your anemia. I think you've had like three solid months where like your world has just been like out of whack and upside down more than normal. And so it's just a matter of like kind of like getting back into your groove because then you had like work to catch up on. That's my theory. And work is so crazy. Like what started off as I have a cute little part-time job. No. I have a job. Yes. Yeah. But then I keep still having kids. I still have so many kids. <laughs> I can't do. And that's the thing. You can have it all, moms. No, the fuck you can't. You got to pick one. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I can't catch my breath and I can't, I can't focus on one thing. But what I do love is time management games. <laughs> <laughs> I love a game where the goal of the game is to multitask your ass off and get stars and diamonds and coins. <laughs> I love wasting time on time management games and Justin's like, are you are you an actual uh, fucking moron? I'm like, I think I'm not well. <laughs> Because I already mastered cooking fever. I already mastered airplane chefs. There's nowhere else for me to fly to. So now I started a new game. <laughs> I've, it's in the newsletter. I'll, I'll tell you about my new game in the newsletter. Anyway, this okay. is a good place to end this one. Yeah. I actually have to go to work. I actually do have to go to work. Well, 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 here we are again. Thank you, as always, for listening to this podcast. Thank you for, like, listening to this outro. To be quite honest, we have an incredibly high playthrough rate. (laughs) Uh, If I could just brag here for a second. (laughs) But we do. A lot of you, most of you, almost every single one of you listens all the way to this part. So thank you for that. It's very, very kind and makes us feel really good. I assume that you were also the kind of people that maybe hang around at the end of a movie to wait uh, to see if anything cute happens in the closing credits. And if you are, then you will enjoy this week's Patreon, wherein I talk about how I can no longer go to the movie theater because I am always convinced that somebody has a gun in the theater. And I tell a story this week about having to leave during the opening credits because the man behind me was fidgeting and I thought that he was going to kill us all. So if you are interested in my neuroses and listening to Melissa commiserate because she too has guns in public paranoia, you can check us out over on Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash imperfect strangers podcast. When you become a patron, not only are you gaining access to tons and tons and tons of bonus content for real, uh, but you're also gaining access to free patron only uh, virtual events. You're gaining access to a private discord server to our monthly newsletter to hearing your name and lights Um, on a special patron sponsored episode each month lots of fun stuff over there so if you're interested go over and check it out there's a link in our instagram bio we are on instagram at imperfect strangers underscore podcast um we are going to have a very special not birthday birthday party for melissa this month and uh, that event is going to be free for our patrons and if you still want to join and you're just like that patrons not for me uh you can buy a ticket we will have details posted about that very soon on our social media and i'm sure we'll we'll, uh, run a little information uh here at the top of our next episode With that, you guys can find us uh, on our website at imperfectstrangerspodcast.com. Sometimes we tweet at imperfstrangers. We are always in our Instagram, so shoot us a DM to say hi. Tell your friends about us. You can rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And listen, if you have not yet left us a rating or review in Apple Podcasts, what are you waiting for? Seriously. We would love nothing more 
than your heartfelt rating and review. It is really about clout. (laughs) When people are looking for new podcasts, ratings and reviews can be a great way for them to get to know a little bit more about the show before they hit play and get invested. Um, And when they see your glowing reviews, it is um, basically you co-signing saying that, yes, this is worth your time. And for that, we appreciate you. So with that, you guys, be well, stay safe in this wild ass pandemic. Check out our merch shop and get your own wild ass pandemic sweatshirt or t-shirt to let everybody know that you are triple vaxxed, waxed, and wearing stacks and stacks and stacks of imperfect strangers merchandise because that is how we roll over here and with that you guys i am going to go we love you all and we will see you next week for a live maybe it's on monday maybe it's not but it's definitely happening next week 7 p.m check us then